Is the Fella Opus the best grinder of 2023? No, definitely not. So then why is everyone talking about it? That's because it's doing something that not many other grinders have been able to pull off. I want to start with who this grinder is for. If you're already using a dual boiler and you have a nice coffee bar setup with a fancy tamp, a WDT and maybe a few precision portafilter baskets, this one is probably a pass for you. But if you're just getting into espresso and you don't have a huge budget and you don't want to spend ages grinding out your coffee with a hand grinder in the morning, this is a pretty great value proposition on paper. What the fellow Opus is trying to do is to bring the entry price point of an espresso grinder down to under $200 US. These days I spend a lot more money on my espresso grinders, but I would have loved it if there was a grinder like this when I first got into espresso with the Brazza Encore to pair with my old Ranchilio Silvia. What's more is that this will hopefully kick into gear some competition so we can all enjoy more affordable but more capable espresso grinders. And it's funny I mentioned the Brazza Encore as they just released an espresso capable grinder at a similar price point. It's already started guys. So what have they done to cut the price back? Well first, it's pretty clear when you open that box that the build quality is not up there with the heavy and polished finish of higher end grinders. The body is all plastic and it isn't exactly a looker. It's much more functional than beautiful, but having said that, I'm happy to say that there are quite a few little nice thoughtful design elements. The dosing cup is charming and I actually found myself liking its simplicity over ones like the Niche and DF83 which tend to leave rings on the outside of the portafilter. It fits on top of any portafilter size, so I've been able to test it out in the cafe with the 53mm La Spaziale machine in there with this inner ring thing of the dosing funnel, which fits perfectly. I love this magnet thing at the bottom too. That's tight. <laughs> The anti-static system Fellow has talked about is nice too. You get fluffy grinds with no clumps at any grind size as far as I've seen, though there is quite a bit of retention and I found the platform got a good gram or so of coffee on it after each use. It's worth giving the top a good tap in your dosing cup after every time you grind to clear that out and reduce the potential mess. And the lid fits well enough that you can push it up and down and treat it like a bellows. The most important thing is the burr set, which is where most of your money is going towards. It's a 40mm conical burr that grinds at around 350 RPM and they look and feel pretty solid. It does take a while to grind though, you have this little button on the front that grinds with a timer, so 30 seconds for one tap, 60 for two, 90 for three, and two minutes if you press and hold. And I found that for an espresso, 30 seconds was never enough to grind out 18 grams, so I was double tapping every time I used it. That's at least 40 seconds or so for an espresso. Pretty slow, but for home use, you might rather do that than spend the same amount of time grinding by hand. So let's grind up some coffee for an espresso and see what we're working with. So this is 18 grams for an espresso and first of all, this is pretty impressive for a budget grinder at the finest setting. These grinds are fluffy even at the finer end where it's a little bit too fine for espresso and chokes up all the machines I've tested it on. I've already opened up the top and moved the little micro adjustment ring all the way to its finest setting. I would suggest doing this from the start if you're an espresso head like me as anything but the finest two settings on the micro adjustment ring will be too coarse for espresso. It's really weird that the inner ring makes the smaller adjustments than the outer ring which leads me to my biggest gripe with with this grinder. So let's pull a shot and I can explain what I mean. Now for this test, I'm using the Ethiopian coffee that I roasted for the cafe and compared to the DF83 that we use for single dosing, I'm just not quite getting the same flavor profile, which fair enough is what you would expect from a grinder that's one third of the price. The timing on this was good. I pulled a one to two ratio espresso in 31 seconds on the third finest grind setting, but the flavors were a little muted. I'm usually getting a strong blueberry sweetness with these beans on the DF83, but with the Opus, I'm still getting that, but it's a little softer and less exciting. It's certainly capable of making an espresso, don't get me wrong, but it's just not got that sharpness or clarity that would make me want to drink this as espresso. The reason is these adjustments. Now the first setting is just too fine for espresso and I only use the second one once for a decaf, but after that the macro adjustment ring on the outside only has five or so levels that are viable for espresso from around three clicks to seven depending on the beans. 
This isn't all that much, so you're not going to be able to get as close to a properly extracted espresso with this as you might with a more expensive espresso focus grinder. Obviously it's not a fair comparison, but tasting this side by side with the DF83, a flat burr, or the niche which has 63mm conical burrs, it's just no competition. I think with Fellow already making the Ode grinder, which focuses on coarser than espresso settings, it might have been a better bet to focus this grinder on espresso, rather than trying to fit the whole range of all brewing methods to 41 steps plus 13 micro steps. This would make this already impressive grinder an absolute steal for people who are just getting into their first home espresso setups. To show the difference more visually, I've ground out 18 grams for an espresso and put it through the Kruv sifter so that you can see the grind size distribution. And the grind distribution is pretty wide. There are a lot more fines in here than there would be for something like the DF83, which helps explain why the flavor is much more punchy, clear, bright and exciting than the wider distribution of the Opus. Though this is what I would have expected from a conical burr grinder, which tends to have a wider distribution of fines and courses than a flat burr grinder like the DF83. So would I recommend this to a friend who's just getting into espresso? If you have a strict budget, then yes, I would. The workflow is really nice, it doesn't make too much of a mess if you tap it out after your shots, and it's capable of doing espresso at a great price point. I'm certainly not going to be using this for my daily shots, but I'm still impressed at what can be done for this price. And I think I'm going to keep using this dosing cup. This is pretty slick. So what do you think about the Opus? Were you planning on buying one for your entry level home setup? Let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. This isn't a sponsored video, but I wanna thank Fellow for sending me this so I can make this review and share my thoughts with all of you. Please like this video if you wanna see more independent reviews like this one. I've got more gear reviews and technique videos coming up, so take care, you wonderfully overcaffeinated people, and I will see you again soon for some more espresso shenanigans.